Hello and welcome. My name's Angie Holden. I'm the blogger behind the Country Sheet Cottage. So today I'm back at it with the mug press, but this time I've been getting tons of questions on whether you could use a sublimation printer with the mug press to make sublimation mugs. And the answer is yes, yes, and yes. So today we're gonna make photo mugs. This has been a huge request on the original video. Can I make mugs with photos? The answer is yes. So I have a couple of mugs. These two mugs are not Cricut mugs, and I'll link to the brand that I purchased below. These two mugs with the gray inside and the gray handle are in fact Cricut mugs, and I hadn't used this type yet, and so I wanted to use them in this video so you would know there's another type out there. So I'm gonna use these in the video. So we're gonna do it a couple of different ways. We are gonna do it with the original Cricut templates. I've already done a video on the Cricut templates and I'll link to like my mug press video below and that video as well. And those Cricut templates come in a couple of different edge styles because you can't be within half an inch of the handle on the Cricut mug press. So I have a couple of different edge styles here that I played with with photo mugs. All of those free Cricut templates work but I'm also offering up some of my own free templates today. So this version says best on one side and dad on the other. And I'm gonna have four free templates on thecountrysheetcottage.net. I'm gonna drop a link for that below. Then I'm gonna have a bundle of eight more that you can purchase for a small amount. I'm gonna try to keep it as affordable as possible just for you. And that way you'll have like enough designs. That's 12 designs total, four free, eight in the bundle. That'll last you all through the year for like all those holidays, all those occasions, all those people you wanna give gifts to. So first, let's take a look at the supplies you're gonna need, and then let's take a look at how to design these mugs, print them, and press them in the Cricut Mug Press. All right, so the supplies you're gonna need, you're gonna need some mugs. I'm gonna use this Cricut Mug because I haven't used it yet, and I'm in love with the gray inside and the gray handle. You can use the Cricut Mugs, you can use this version with the gray, you can use the white version, you can use a couple of different um, infusible ink mugs I've found. I'll link to the mugs I recommend below. Now, let's talk about the templates. So the templates I've sized for the small and large Cricut mug, and it also fits another mug that I found on Amazon, the, like the large version, and I'll link to that below. If you're not using the Cricut mugs, Here's just a random sublimation mug. What I'm gonna recommend is like the sewing tape measure. And what you can do is get a measurement from top to bottom. So you know how wide your template needs to be. So you would know this way, so you could resize it appropriately. And then you need to be a half an inch from the handle on both sides. And you could take this tape measure, wrap it around, and you could measure how long your template needs to be. And the standard template for both Cricut small and large mugs are 8.75, and that would work in this case. So you would be fine, but you would probably need, let's see, so the, the small template might work. So the large template is 4.25, and the large is 3.75, I believe. I'll put the dimensions for the large and small template in the description below just so you'll have those but like this would probably work it's not a Cricut mug but it would probably work with the small template if that makes sense but you can either measure beforehand or you could print one off wrap it around and see if it would work but you might waste your ink after we have our mugs picked we'll need a lint roller scissors protective paper some kind of heat resistant mat we'll need our sublimation paper and sublimation printer and i'm going to show you how to design these you'll need heat tape and of course your mug press so i'm using cricut design space to size these and print them obviously you see my box okay so let's talk about this so the box will use extra ink that we don't need for sublimation i do get that but it also makes it super easy to size these and get this cut out that I'm after with my templates. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in Design Space. If you have another design program, feel free to use that because you do not need this box and you do not need the Cricut machine at all. We, I'm just using Design Space to size my template and print it onto sublimation paper. So this is a sublimation paper with my sublimation printer and you will see that it's mirrored. So let's head to Design Space and see how to size these. Let's make some photo mug wraps. 
So I'm going to do this a couple different ways. The first way is with some free SVGs that I'm going to have on my website. So I'm going to have these four for free that you see here. And then I'll have so eight other versions of this that you could get at a discount price. Um, so just depending on what you wanted the words to say, hopefully I will have most of those sayings. So we're going to do one this way and then we're also going to do one with the template and design space. So to get to that from your design space canvas, you can go to images and you can pull down project type. And I'm going to use the large mug for both my mugs, but you could click small mugs here. And you can actually find the templates here for the large and small mugs. So let's say that I wanted to do the, like the torn edge. I would just find the template with the torn edge. Now here's the template with the like scalloped, the zigzag, the wavy. So you would just pick the template you want and insert that onto your canvas. And then for this, we won't need the outer cut so we can just delete that away. And then we're left with this template. So you can see I've sized my templates to be sized for the large Cricut mugs. And I'll have a small and large version on my website. And you can find a link below for that. So now you'll need to upload images. I'm going to go do this two different ways. I'll do it with a single image and then with a group of images into a collage. So let's talk about a single image first. So what you want to do is run through and upload your image. I've already uploaded the image that we need. So we're going to make a mug with this image and we'll insert that. Now it just so happens this one is the wrong direction. So I'm just going to rotate that right into design space. And as you can see, it's way too large, but we can fix that. The first thing we're going to do is make it a bit smaller and let's make this one a mug for dad. So we can put the best dad over it and as we hover over, we can kind of see how the image will fit onto the wrap. And I think I want my picture to be a little smaller. So I'll just make the picture a little smaller. Again, hover over it with my wrap, decide if I like it, and just keep doing that until I like the way the wrap looks on the image. And once I like the way the wrap looks on the image, we're just gonna drop it into place. Now we'll pick both the wrap and the image, and we'll click Slice. And now we need to get rid of everything extra. So this is the image we want. And we don't even need that anymore. So now we have best dad and it's all out of our picture. So that is going to be the one with the words. And I'm going to just go ahead and delete the rest of these so we don't have them on our canvas. Now let's do a collaged image with this wrap. And this is one of the ones free in design space. So we'll need to upload our images. So we'll do that first. So we'll click upload. This time I'll show you how to upload the image just in case that you don't know how. You just need to find where your image is, pick it, and upload it. You can do complex here is fine. Click continue. You don't need to erase anything because we're going to use it for our mug wrap. And you want it to be a print then cut image, so be sure to click the square and to upload. Now it's in the same place as my other one was, and I'll pick that and insert it onto my canvas. So I want to collage this with another image, so I'm going to insert another one that I've already uploaded. So we already walked through how to upload, so I'll insert my second image. So I'm going to collage two here, but you can use as many images as you would like for the collage function. So we are just going to start by resizing these however we think they will look good on our wrap. So I just kind of go through and then you can also arrange these. So you could bring one, I could send this one to the back if I liked that one in the back and I actually like it in the front. So I'm gonna keep it in the front. We just keep an eye on our wrap here and make sure that it's looking okay. So 
So now I have my two images. If I lay my wrap over, I really like the position of those photos. So I'm gonna lay my wrap over them both. And now you can only slice two things at a time. So if I combine these two images by welding them together, that's going to get rid of my print and cut. So we don't wanna do that. We're gonna undo that. If I flatten these two images together, I still won't be able to get that slice function because it still sees it as more than one image. So I'm gonna undo that, we're gonna unflatten. So what I like to do is just slice one at a time. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this background so I have two copies of it. And then I'm gonna pick the first picture in the background and click slice. Then I'm gonna get rid of everything that I don't need. So I don't need this piece, I don't need this piece, I don't need this piece. So all I need is this piece. And then I need to put this background over, I need to pick what I sliced and the background and align, align left, align, align top. Now it's perfectly aligned with my first image and I'll pick the background and my second image, click slice. Once again, I'm gonna get rid of everything I don't need. So I don't need this, this, or this. And now I'm left with two print and cut images, the perfect size for my wrap. So now I can pick both of those and click flatten at this point. And I am left with a single print and cut image that is the perfect size for my wrap. Now, I'm using sublimation for these. Why do I need it to be a print and cut image? It's just easier to explain in Cricut Design Space as far as how to slice the images. There are definitely other programs out there and if you have those, you can definitely take my SVG files into those programs and slice away or you could take the mug wraps from Cricut and you could export those as like a ping and you could slice away in another program as well. But for just simplicity's sake, you can do it right here in Cricut Design Space. And now when I click make it, you'll see that I have two print and cut files that I can now send to my sublimation printer. So one thing I did want to note, first, you will need to choose either Maker or Explore in Cricut Design Space for this to work. Cricut Joy does not work with print and cut and you will not see the correct options for that one. And then after I click make it, I did wanna point one thing out. You can mirror your design in here. I have my sublimation printer set to mirror every time. So if I was to mirror here, that would be a double mirror, which would not be good. So I'm gonna leave mirror off in here and I'm just gonna click continue and I'm gonna click send to printer from here. One thing you wanna do when you do printing in Cricut Design Space to a sublimation printer, first I will pick my sublimation printer. I'm going to uncheck Add to Bleed. Now, if you have any trouble with your sublimation printer printing too fast or not printing high quality, you can use this Use System dialog box. And after you click Print, a dialog box will open up for your printer and you can change any settings in this dialog box to make it print correctly. So now I'm going to print both of my pictures and then we'll take a look at how to add those to a sublimation mug. All right, so now that I have these printed, we're going to press, right? So I'm going to set my mug press over here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and let it start heating up. Now for our prints, we don't want this black box on our mug, obviously. So I'm going to trim that away. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to cut on the sublimation print, but I'm going to cut fairly close take my time and try to cut fairly straight because I'm gonna use this to make sure I get my design straight on my mug. I wanna be sure to cut straight across. And then we're gonna use that same procedure across the top. Be sure to cut fairly close and as straight as you can get it. Now my template is ready for sublimation. All right, off camera, I repeated the same thing with my other print, so it's ready to go. 
And I did want to note something about sublimation prints, just in case you don't know. So the colors are really muted off a sublimation printer, and we're really going to see them pop after we press it. So don't be alarmed when your sublimation print looks really muted. All right, the next thing you're going to need is some protected paper. Some people don't use this when doing mugs. I like to protect my mug press. I'm going to use three sheets. I think two sheets is probably enough. However, I can just reuse that top sheet if nothing gets on it. So I use three sheets and I cut them to basically as wide as my print. And then I'll trim them to length here in a minute just with a pair of scissors. So we're just gonna take our mug and the first thing you need to do is clean your mug. So I'm just gonna lint roll it off. And I've seen some people complaining about lint rollers. So my lint roller is the Scotch brand. I don't have any problems with any residue being left on my mug. I have heard people say that to choose the lint roller that's intended to pick up hair and it will work better. But mine is just like the Scotch brand from Sam's. So I buy them in bulk. Okay, so when it's completely clean, what I'd like to do is turn the mug this way. So handle up and then I can kind of see the center, right? And I can come in from this way and I know the center of my design roughly. And remember, I cut this bottom super straight. So I can just go straight onto here and then I'm gonna look from the top and see if it's straight. If it's not, I can turn it slightly until I get it centered on that mug. So I think that's centered. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape one side so I'm gonna run a piece of tape down one side of that sublimation paper. And then I'm gonna get this as tight as I can. So I'm gonna push all the way around, making sure it's tight. And I still wanna make sure it's even on the bottom because everything needs to be straight. And then we're gonna put another piece of tape. And now I still wanna make sure everything's super tight. So we wanna make sure that this top gets as tight as possible. Right across there, so that's down now. And I actually got a little bubble in the paper. So I'm gonna lift that up, press that bubble out. Now everything's pretty tight at the top. And we're gonna repeat that at the bottom. So we're gonna get everything super tight across here. And these mugs are, the, it's the large size Cricut mug, so it's fairly tight going into the press. And I don't want this bottom going anywhere. So I'm gonna tape all across the bottom, making sure it's tight and doesn't lift as I put it into the press. Now, that looks really good. So now we can work on adding the paper around the outside. All right, so we're going to stack these three pieces of paper together. We're going to put them on all at once. All right, so this is um, paper intended for sublimation. So it's a protective paper. I'll link to it below. You can use butcher paper in its place if you have that already for infusible ink. That is not a problem, but this is paper intended for sublimation. And I'm just gonna wrap that around and I'm gonna cut it to size. This doesn't have to be precise at all. So we're just looking for all three of these to be covering up the entire design. That's all I'm looking for. So I did cut them a little long so they can, they will probably stick out of the top of the press just a little bit. And that part can singe as you press it, but that is okay. And what I'm gonna do is get these as tight as possible, use some more tape, and just pull that as tight as I can get it. And we'll use a couple pieces of more tape. All right, 
So now we are tight to the mug. We have everything protected and we are ready to add this one to our mug press. All right, so with the mug press, all we do is put it bottom side down inside the press. Remember the 15 ounce is a tight fit, so I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it in there, press it down, and then we wanna get it where it's centered in the press, close that handle, and it'll time itself. All right, when this is done, you just lift up the lever, the handle should be cool, and you just put it onto a heat resistant pad. Now, we can pull this off while it's warm, but if you wanna let it cool, that's fine too. But I like to have some heat resistant gloves because I'm impatient and I like to go ahead and rip my tape off. I do have the second mug ready to go. I'm gonna put it into the Cricut mug press. Now I do wanna say, I didn't talk about this before, but the Cricut mug press, like you just turn it on and it times itself. So I don't know the times and temperatures I'm using for these mugs. So just FYI, it just does its thing and makes a pretty good sublimation mug. So we are going to set this one inside. I did it the same way as the other one. Put it down and close the lever. And then this one will press and time itself and we can start removing the tape from this hot one. And while I'm peeling off this tape, let's talk a little bit about mugs. So we use the Cricut mug. I didn't tape around the top. Some mugs you will find are slightly tapered. So it's barely, where well, you can barely see it, but they are slightly tapered. And that means that your sublimation design might mess up at the top. If that's the case, you'll need to tape all around the top. The Cricut mugs are super straight. I love them for that. But just to note, if you're gonna use other mugs and you have trouble with the sublimation fading out at the top, it is just that the mug is slightly tapered. All right, and here we go. Let's reveal our design. Remember I said the colors will really pop after sublimating, and you can see that gorgeous picture on our mug, and this one with the words, best dad. So I've got a bunch of different templates, and you can head to the description below to get those. Now I'll wait on my other mug, and we'll take a look at it. And here's a look at both the mugs we made. So I, this, this one is still really hot. So I'm gonna have my gloves on for this portion of the video, but you can see the gorgeous pictures and how great sublimation is on mugs. All right, it's actually a pretty simple process, right? So drop down below, I'm gonna have tons of links for you, videos to watch. I will link to a video on how I made an Epsom EcoTank printer into a sublimation printer. If you're not into sublimation yet, that's kind of the absolute cheapest way to get into it. And it kind of explains how sublimation works. I'll also link to a video if this is the first time you've ever heard of sublimation and you're just wild about photo mugs. I will link to a video that is just like, what is sublimation, the basics below as well. So the what is sublimation, how to turn that Epsom printer into a sublimation printer, then mug press videos, and then you'll have all the basics you need to start creating your own photo mugs right at home. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know I am in love with this project. One of my favorite projects of all time. You can definitely just use the free Cricut templates like I said, or the freebies that are on my blog, but I have that extra bundle if you need it. Absolutely pick that up. Make mugs for all the people for like every holiday. Like Mother's Day is coming up, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, whatever days, birthdays, all the holidays, a photo mug is like the gift to give, in my opinion. Now, if you don't want to use Cricut blanks in your mug press, like I said, I've got a couple of different, I'll link to these mugs and then some other mugs that I found that work in the mug press. I've also used a variety of tumblers in the mug press and you could modify this project slightly to go on a tumbler 100%. So I will link to the video below where I went through some of the blanks that I used in the mug press. And then you can think about ways to modify the project itself for tumblers and things like that if you wanted to do that. So I will link to that below as well. So I hope this helped you. If you have any questions about making the photo mugs, sublimation, the mug press, whatever, you can drop down in the comment section and ask away. If you like this project as much as I do, 
you're like obsessed with photo mugs or whatever, please give our video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos every single week about your cricket, about sublimation, and all kinds of other crafts. So I hope you will join us by hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.